What is up book nerds? I'm Rachel Bateman and today's video is all about conflict. I know a lot of us are typically adverse to conflict and don't like being in a lot of conflict, but when it comes to writing, conflict is what drives the tension and drives the pace of our stories. Our stories need conflict in them to keep them interested and to keep them moving. So I wanted to take some time to give some tips and tricks for writing conflict into your story. Conflict is nothing more than opposing desires. Conflict doesn't have to be huge and dramatic and life altering all the time. In fact, books where every conflict is treated like a huge life altering moment or experience, they tend to never relent on their pacing and their push and their tension to the point where they are not enjoyable reads. We need a little bit of downtime in our reading to recoup before the next big thing. So we don't need every single conflict to be a huge explosive thing. All conflict has to be is two opposing desires. And those opposing desires don't necessarily have to be between two people. Conflict is often the protagonist's desire opposing the antagonist's desire. That is a very common thing and a thread throughout books and stories. But it could be your main character's desire conflicting with their best friend's desire. And they still love each other and they're best friends and they really want a lot of the same things, but in the moment they have conflicting desires. And that doesn't have to mean they are fighting or arguing in any way, just that character one's desire is opposing characters twos, meaning only one of them can truly get what they desire. This could be your main character's desire opposing the love interests or their mom or some random woman in the grocery store or whatever. Conflict happens at all different levels and at its core it is opposing desires. Some of the best conflict is when one character has opposing desires within themselves. When they desire two or sometimes more than two different things or even kind of similar things, but the desires themselves are in opposition with each other. They can only really get one of the things they desire because by getting that, they have to let go of their other desire. Probably the most obvious example of this conflicting desires within one person is the love triangle trope. I am personally not a huge fan of love triangles in general, but when they are done well, you can see these conflicting desires very, very strongly because it's not, oh, I desire to be with character A and I also desire to be with character B, but I can only be with one and that's a conflict. It's a conflict of who our main character is and what they most want out of life that isn't necessarily completely dependent on the partner that they choose. Once they figure out that, then they go and the love triangle is resolved and they figure out who they're with. So that's a very clear example of the conflicting desires within oneself, but there are all kinds of ways that a single character can have opposing desires that can cause internal conflict in your book. Another good way to look at this internal conflict is to give your protagonist two motives. They have two motives for where they're going in the story, but in order to achieve one, they have to sacrifice the other. You can't reach both of them. Pretty clear now that the conflict is opposing desires, but that can play out on the page in myriad different ways. So I'm gonna give you some ways to think about conflict or things that you could add to your book in order to heighten the conflict in it. The first one goes right hand in hand with those opposing desires, and that is choices. When your character has multiple choices, two or more choices, each choice needs to have both a positive and a negative consequence. When we give our characters choices and our readers are like, well, duh, this choice is amazing and this choice sucks. There's no actual conflict there. The reader knows that unless the character is a complete idiot, they are going to pick this choice every time because you have set it up as being the only valid choice. If the choice is all good consequences versus all bad consequences, no one is surprised when your reader chooses all good consequences, but they are very, very angry and feel betrayed when they choose all bad consequences. But when you give your character choices that have both good 
end bad consequences, that creates a deep conflict for your characters that your readers are going to be feeling. Because no matter which option that character chooses, they are going to gain something and they are going to lose something. And it is up to you as the author to figure out which way your character goes, obviously, but your character needs to figure out what is most important for them. Is losing this more important than gaining this? Is gaining the positive over here more important than losing the negative over here? Having it be an actual choice, not an obvious setup, creates natural conflict, even if there isn't a lot of drama and fighting. Maybe the most important tip of this video is coming right now because that falls right in line with the choices, and that is that you need to let your character be wrong sometimes. Let them make the wrong choice. Give them those choices that have both positive and negative consequences so they have a difficult decision, and then let them make the wrong one. Have your character think they are making the right decision, that they are willing to give up whatever the negative of one choice is in order to gain the positive of another, but once that actually follows through, realize how wrong they were. This will keep driving your plot forward and it will help drive your plot in a very active way instead of a character who's just reacting to things when they are making choices that make the plot more complex and make things harder. That gives a more fulfilling story. So give them choices, give them hard choices, and sometimes let them be wrong. It's much more fulfilling at the end of a story, assuming you're writing a story with a happy ending, when your character has made wrong choices and is able to redeem that and figure out how to have success and achieve at the end, than just reading a story that everything goes well and they are always making the right choice and that that's not really conflict, if that's what's happening. All my tips are kind of flowing together now. I don't even know what number I'm on. If I've even been numbering them. Have I been numbering my tips? I don't think I have. So I've already kind of started talking about this one, and that is to let your character's decisions direct the cause of conflict. You can have some external conflict in your story, things that they have no control over, and it happens to them, and that moves things along. That you can have that, especially at the beginning, that can happen. But there needs to come a point where your character is taking charge and they are active. And that needs to not happen just at the very end of the book, which means that unless you want a book that starts and here's a little conflict and then there's a whole bunch of fluff and nothing until the end, your character's choices are actively going to create the conflict. They are going to make decisions that they think are right. They are going to make decisions that they think will get them where they want, but that's not going to be the case. Let your main character be active. Let them make those decisions that create conflict for them in the story. So they have to figure out how to get past that and work through the conflict in order to achieve at the end. So I know I already said that letting your characters be wrong is maybe the biggest piece of advice I have for this video. I totally lied, but I'm not going to go back and refilm that and edit it. So just pretend I didn't say it or just, you know, figure that this is just as important and they kind of go hand in hand. And this tip for creating and sustaining conflict in your story is that your character has a flaw that becomes a barrier to achieving their goal for the book. Whatever it is that they're setting out to do, their personal flaw is what is standing in the way and they're going to have to work around that. And when I mean flaw, and I've talked about this in the past, but what I mean isn't that they were in an accident and crippled, or they are born with cerebral palsy, or they are vision or hearing impaired, or any kind of physical impairment. That's not what I mean by flaw. That is not a flawed character. Now, I'm not saying you should not write characters with physical or mental impairments. Absolutely, we need good representation in our characters. But what I mean is writing characters with physical and mental impairments is not writing flawed characters. When I'm talking about flaws, I'm talking about personality flaws. They are selfish, or they don't know how to let people in. They, they've they never been able to really ask for help. They're narcissistic. They, they don't trust people. There are any number of personality flaws that can stand in the way of your character achieving what they want. That is what I'm talking about. Having a character who has a deep-seated flaw that is in opposition with what they want will give you a through line of tension, no matter what's happening in the plot and what other opposing 
desires are going on between characters or within your character. If your character's primary flaw is at odds with what they want and they're going to need to learn to overcome that flaw by the end, that will give you tension and that will give you conflict for the whole story. All right, y'all, I wanna hear from you. So leave it down in the comments. What are your favorite kind of conflicts to read in books or see on the screen? And give me some examples of books you've read recently or movies you've seen that have done a very good job with conflict in their story. I wanna check them out. I love seeing how other people are creating that tension and conflict and working it in. So sound off in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've not already subscribed, you know the drill. Go ahead and do that now and hit that little bell so you're notified when I post new videos. I'm Rachel Bateman and I'll see you back here next time.